Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. Selling a house is not always an easy job, but with the kind of buyer our OP got, it's almost impossible. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Lowball me on my house? No. This was about 10 years ago now. Got a new job about three hours away, so I had to sell my house. This was in the Midwest, medium-sized town, historic district, a house on the historic registry, beautiful old Victorian, built in 1895. It had been fully restored in the early 80s, with a lot of work done. But as with any old house, there were ongoing maintenance needs. That being said, electrical and plumbing were less than 10 years old and fully up to code. Brand new HVAC system and components, new windows, siding recently painted. Basically, this old house was in tip-top shape. Asking price, 135k. I was expecting to get about 124 at the time in this area. These prices were on the higher end, but not the most expensive in the neighborhood and not the cheapest either. Very fairly priced. A young couple comes and looks at it and fell in love with it. They wanted a second showing where the young man's father, who was a contractor, was going to look it over. Their first home purchase, I was leery, but also had nothing to hide. I didn't have an issue. Dad comes and looks at the house, and the next day an offer came through, asking price 135k, offer amount 85k. Accompanying the offer was a laundry list of things that needed to be fixed, along with what contractor dad would charge for the repair. I won't go into why this was ridiculous, other than to say that many of these repairs were fully subjective, cosmetic repairs that were unnecessary. My realtor asked what I wanted to counter with. Counter? I was offended. I said, I won't be countering. That's an offensive and ridiculous offer and list of demands. Finally, after she practically begged me to counter, I said, just say, no, that's it. No context, just reply with a single no. She did. Minutes later, her phone was ringing. Other realtor, you have to counter with something, anything. They're expecting a counter. Even if it's almost no difference. She was begging for a counter offer. Fine, I countered at 145K. Accompanying was the reason. Potentially difficult buyers. They came back at 110, I declined. Sold the house about three weeks later for 128K. This strategy is all over the internet, how to get rich in real estate. Step one, find a house worth $600,000. Step two, purchase the house for $35,000. Step three, profit. Anyone can do it. And our second story. Rude ticket inspector gets a taste of her own medicine. So I'm on the train heading into the city to attend a lecture. I'm a 21 year old student, male, having a pleasant enough morning. It was maybe 20 minutes to nine. I missed my usual quarter past eight train, which is normally crammed full of morning commuters, but not to worry as class didn't start until nine. And I usually stop by and grab a bacon roll and a cup of tea, but I'd make it to class with five minutes to spare if I gave up my bacony goodness. Tragedy, I know. I'd just recently upgraded my bank account and got a new debit card that allowed me to use the card to pay for my train tickets on the train, which was handy because the machines can be slow and I've missed a few trains in the past when using my old debit card that only worked on these machines, not the handheld ones that she has on her person. So I thought, why not use this opportunity to test out the new card? As I said, it was the train after the usual busy commute, but the carriage was still at least three quarters full. The ticket inspector comes by, and she's a middle-aged English woman, I live in Scotland, who I've seen before and have noticed that she can be very rude and obnoxious and thinks she's God's gift because she has authority on the train. She starts to check people's tickets, tapping her feet and huffing with impatience at people who have to dig around in their pockets to find their tickets before she can move on. Clearly not pleased that people don't have them at the ready. I'm sitting there with my earphones in, minding my own business with my new debit card at the ready. As she approaches me and asks to see a ticket, I flick one earphone out and tell her what type of ticket I need and where I was going. Around this time, we were going through a tunnel, so there was a bit of reverberation of the sound of wind gushing through the carriage. She asked me to repeat myself because she claimed she couldn't hear me. So I repeat my request. 
Now, I don't know if she has hearing problems or being English, she couldn't seem to understand my Scottish accent, which isn't very strong at all, because I had to repeat myself a total of three more times. Each time, I was progressively getting louder and louder until I was almost shouting, and I could see other people on the train looking up, clearly curious as to why I was talking so loud, proving that they could hear me just fine. Finally, she understands what I'm trying to ask her and then says in her most bitchy, condescending tone, well, if maybe you took out your other earphone while talking, I might be able to hear you better. I sat for a couple seconds in confusion, absorbing what she just said. It didn't make sense. But all attention was on me and her now, and I could see confusion at her statement registering on other nearby passengers' faces as well. Not one for confrontation, I swiftly apologized and handed her my debit card. She huffed and whipped out her card machine, but it seemed like my morning was only going to get worse because my new card got declined. I have money in my account, but later that day I learned that I had to call or text a number to activate my new card, which I forgot to do. She was visibly irritated when I asked her to try and ring it up again, but no luck. I'm starting to get a bit red in the face, because at least half the train's looking in my direction. Some people were looking sympathetically towards me, others just smirked at my misfortune. Luckily, I kept 20 pounds behind my phone cover in case of emergencies, so I asked her to bear with me while I take my phone out of my pocket and crack open the case, then present her with the 20 note. Now, maybe it was because I was a young male, or maybe it was because the note was behind my phone case, but when I handed it to her, she snatched it off me and held it up to the light and scrutinized it for literally 15 to 20 seconds to see if it was fake. This is strange, because it had never happened before, and I've used many 20-pound notes to pay for a ticket before. I ask her if there's a problem with the note, to which she replies in a loud voice, I'll tell you in a minute, boy. Oh, crap, she did not just call me boy. You could cut the tension in the carriage with a knife. All eyes were on this transaction at this point. Finally, she seems to accept my note as legal tender and digs around in her purse for my change. I received a few coins back, a five-pound note and a ten-pound note. As she handed me the change, she started to walk away. But I saw my one and only chance of revenge, so I loudly say, hang on a minute, and you can probably guess what happened next. I held those notes up to the light, scrutinizing them so intensely it seemed like I was going to burn a hole right through them. As I did this, the entire carriage erupted in laughter, and the old couple closest to me started an applause which spread throughout the majority of spectators. The ticket woman's face turned a deep shade of violet. She hastily made her way to the next carriage, not even bothering to check the remaining people's tickets. Justice was served, and I felt absolutely amazing. And that was my favorite day ever. That is the GD classiest way I've ever seen to trounce a train troll. And our last story. Ruined a marriage and my family for revenge. I've always been the black sheep of the family. Cousins grew up to be doctors, professors, creatives, and whatever else. Meanwhile, I've managed to make just a humble, stable, passive income through some business decisions. Nothing fancy, but I can afford a one-bedroom in New York City and live comfortably with that and a part-time job in a cafe. Everyone in the family, including my own parents, judge me harshly for not pushing myself to do what my cousins do. Especially my one cousin we'll call Randy. Think the stereotypical dude bro who got rich thanks to working for his dad? Multiply that by 10 and you got Randy. Anyway, he always gave me the most crap, and eventually I just tuned him out because I get to enjoy my life with my SO, work part-time, and can still afford what I want. So, to cut the bullcrap short, Randy has a wife and two kids. He also has a mistress. I found this out because one day when I was walking through the city, I saw him walking down the street with a woman who clearly wasn't his wife, arms around each other. I checked Facebook and saw he had indeed posted about visiting a bagel shop in the city while on a business trip that morning, so he had indeed been in the city. So I decide, F it, let me see how this plays out. I followed them for five hours, snapped several photos, one of them going into a hotel together. I held on to these and waited until Christmas that year, about six months later. I decided to unceremoniously drop printed photos in front of everyone at the table before dinner and make sure to get his wife to see them. 
cue screaming and fighting. I actually got a black eye out of it. It was Randy's dad who did it, though, not him. Cue police, a lot of questioning. My SO and I get kicked out. We head back home after talking to the cops one last time. The aftermath. Besides Randy's wife and another cousin who hates Randy, my family cut me off entirely for several years. Whatever, even my parents had always expressed disappointment in me for not applying myself fully, so no real loss there. Randy got divorced, lost full custody of the kids after threatening his ex. Family occasionally tries to guilt me into apologizing, but my response is some variation of not gonna apologize for outing a cheating C-word, and I'm promptly blocked for another few months. S.O. and Randy's ex-wife are good friends, and the kids call me uncle. Nice having a family who actually loves me unconditionally for once. S.O. and I got married, and that's when my family last tried to get in contact with me, and were actually nice for once. Seeing me moving on, I guess, eats at them. I don't know. Maybe realizing their punching bag is gone for good. That's it, really. Living my best life for now with a good family as opposed to a crap one. Edit. For those who think being abused is not traumatic or bad, as several comments seem to be saying, wow, you're a bad person for having a negative reaction to abuse and not handling it like a golden human being. So I'll clarify. The comments about my wasted potential weren't just, oh, your cousin's a doctor, what about you? They were, I can't believe Randy just sealed a deal for X amount of dollars and you're still working at that crappy cafe? Are you still seeing what's her name, the girl with the pudgy stomach? Aren't you ever going to do anything with your life? I'd feel so worthless living like that. And those are the nicer ones. The worst ones include being told that it's better I didn't try as I wouldn't amount to anything and other such things along those lines as I really don't care to remember the more toxic ones. This is a strange blend of petty plus nuclear. I like it. I really do. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.